Hello, my name is Rafael Sheikh, and in this learning object, we're going to see the basic forms and uses of the passive voice in English, with a special emphasis in technical English. We will see the form, how to form the passive voice, to see some uh, verb transformations. We will focus also on the transformation into the passive of uh, constructions with verse with two objects. And also we will have a look at the use of the passive verbs and we will see some examples of uh, passive and active sentences. The objectives are to learn how to write uh, correct passive sentences, to change um, sentences from passive into uh, um, active and vice versa correctly, and to be able to make passive sentences with a specific two object verb sentences and to learn how to use the passive voice properly in English. Here we have the, um, an example of an active and a passive uh, sentence. In the active sentence the object does the action, carries out an action. The verb is in the active form and the object receives the consequences or of this action. For example, the pilot monitors flight parameters. In a passive sentence, we have the, that the passive subject receives the action. Doesn't, it doesn't it produces the action. The verb is in the passive form, as we will see in a minute. And sometimes we can include the person or the thing that carries out the action by means of the construction by plus the agent. For example, flight parameters are monitored by the pilot. The important thing is to know how to transform an active verb into passive a verb and vice versa. But we have to bear in mind that only transitive verbs, that means verbs that can take objects, or that are followed by objects, it can be one or two objects, can they, only transitive verbs can be transformed into passive constructions. Some sentences containing certain verbs, therefore, cannot be trans uh, transformed into um, passive sentences. Some of them contain verbs such as have, resemble, look like, equal, agree, with, mean, contain, hold, comprise, lack, suit, feed, become, etc. These are some of the most common ones. An important thing in passive voice uh, construction is verbal transformations. The rule, the general rule, is very, very clear. We, <coughs> we put the, the, the subject of the um, passive, uh, voice, passive sentence first, and then we use the uh, verb, exactly the same tense of the verb to be, followed by the past participle of the a corresponding verb. Here we have a summary or list of the most important cases we can uh, deal with. Present, present perfect, past, past perfect, future, etc. It doesn't mean how easy or complicated the verb is. The rule that is mechanical. It's exactly the same. The car is or the cars are designed or, for example, in a complicated um, a verb form such as the present progressive is exactly the same rule. The car or the cars is being or are being designed is exactly the same tense of the verb to be followed by the past participle. Even with modal verbs, with modal verbs it is even easier. We use exactly the um, modal verb of the verb to be, in this case can be, should be or whatever, then follow, as always, with the past participle. So this presents no complication, but you have to be bear this in mind all the time when you write passive sentences. We have to mention the specific case of verbs uh, that can take two different objects. Normally one of them is a personal object and the other one is a thing object. And in this case, we have two possible passive constructions. In the active, we have a subject doing the action, plus the verb, plus the indirect object, 
or the direct object. And we have two possible passive constructions taking uh, the direct object of the active as the subject of the passive or taking the indirect object as the subject of the passive sentence. Here we have the structures and an example to see it better. The active, uh, an active sentence such as Professor Billy Villa gave George, Jorge, an A could be translated into two different, uh, but exactly the same, passive sentences. An A was given to Jorge by Professor Billy Villa. In this case, we use the direct object, the object which is more closely related to the verb. But we also have the possibility of a second passive sentence. sentence. Jorge was given an A. In this case, we have no equivalent, for example, in the English language. So uh, be careful with this. Uh, this is a specific of the English language. Other similar verbs that can form a double passive sentence of this type are send, show, lend. This have in common that it's a send something to somebody, to show something to somebody, etc. They have two different objects. In this case, in the case of Professor Villa gave Jorge an A, the most common passive sentence is the second one, which is which does not exist, for example, in, in, in the Spanish language. Now we will move on to the use of the passive board, the voice. Uh, normally we use it when we want to emphasize the action rather than the person or thing carrying out this action. For example, the terrorist activist has been caught. If we, don't, if we concentrate on the action as the most important thing. The second use is when the subject is a noun or an important. We don't know the object, it can happen. The tapestry was woven by in the 16th century, we don't know who did it. The third use, when the subject does not wish to be mentioned for any reason. The cookie jar was broken. This was not relevant to include the person who carried out the action. And also we use the passive voice when we want to emphasize the person or thing being acted upon. This is another way of focusing on the a action, but uh, from the point of view of the person. For example, the child will be born this morning. We will see some examples uh, of active and passive sentences. For example, for an active sentence such as this one with the two um, objects, they asked me some difficult questions at the interview. We have two possible possible passive sentences. Some difficult questions were asked to me at the interview or the most common one, I was asked some difficult questions at the interview. This is an example of a two uh, verbs with two uh, objects. Another example, workers would have revised all the pipes if someone had asked them to. The passive would be all the pipes would have been revised by workers if they had been asked to. We follow the exactly the same general mechanical rule. In this other example, hundreds of people followed him when he was walking in the street. The second ver active verb cannot be tra transformed into passive, into pass but the first one can. He was followed by hundreds of people when he was walking in the street. In this case, it is important, sometimes it is important to include the agent doing the action with by. One last example with a question, how much will they pay you? How much will you be paid? Or with model verbs, they should pres present the real facts. The real facts should be presented exactly the same rule we were talking about before. As a conclusion, it is important to write uh, and use the passive voice correctly in, in, in English, um, to know the rules to, to transform and to convert the active and passive sentences and the verbs, and you don't have to translate from your language, you have to actually use 
the correct, the corresponding passive construction in English, especially with two uh, object verbs. Thank you very much and I hope this was useful for you. Thank you.